So I just did my whole thing, and it turns out I didn't press record. So I'm gonna start again. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Maca. <laughs> and today, for the second time, I'm going to talk about my Around the World in 80 Books project, and I'm going to talk about the books that I've read for North America, Mid Middle America, and South America. The countries that I was able to cross off until now are Chile, Colombia, Suriname, uh, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Mexico, and the US. Let's get started! Again! So for the US I read a lot of books, obviously, because it's a big country. Um, but I counted The Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. It was a book club pick last year, or maybe two years ago, and it was my introduction to Toni Morrison. I had trouble reading the book. It's written beautifully, but it's still hard to read. You need to at the same time keep going and to kind of accept that stuff is happening, uh, but also take your time to really see things through. Uh, and I think I wasn't a mature reader enough to really appreciate it. Um, so the book is about Make Milkman dead as he becomes a man, basically. The first part of the book we meet Milkman and we get to know him, as well as other very complex characters and in this and they don't really do anything we just see them living and doing what sometimes feel like random stuff and in the second part of the book uh, Milkman does have a direction and he wants to try to find some gold and that part was somewhat easier to read the book gave me insight into what it's like to live in Michigan in the 1950s for black men and women and despite not liking it at the time because I just didn't get it I'm thinking of trying Beloved by Toni Morrison because I think I hope that I've grown as a reader and that I'll be able to appreciate the book for what it does instead of what I did with the Song of Solomon which was just not accepting it for what it was basically now for Mexico I have read The Murmur of Bees by Sofia Segovia as I've already talked about this book in a previous video, I'll link that video up here. Uh, so if you want to know more, you can check that out. Uh, for now, I'll just say that by reading that book, I learned more about life in Mexico, obviously, and especially the influence of the Spanish flu at the time and the rural land reforms and the influence of that on the life of people. Next, we have the book that I read for the Dominican Republic, which is Dominicana by uh, Angie Cruz, another book that I've already talked about, so we'll link up in the cards. And this book gave me insight into what poverty is like in the Dominican Republic and what the status is of the US, how it's this holy grail and the solution for many, many problems. And it showed what the status is of the men that, in this case, go to New York to work and how they bring back money and they're always asked to bring back stuff, bring back stuff, because there isn't any stuff in the Dominican Republic. Um, and it also showed how life for women is different than life for men and women have still a very conservative role where they do the cleaning and the cooking and nothing that is seen as a value, but that is the basis of their lives basically. Next I want to talk about the book that is set in Jamaica and that is, where did I put it? On the ground. I don't know why I didn't grab my table. Anyway, it's the Book of Night Women by Marlon James. I absolutely love this book. It's very dark and it's about a slave plantation in Jamaica at the end of the 1800s. As I said, very dark, there's a lot of violence, and it really shows how the slaves were treated at, this, at the time. And so we see some... I can't remember if she's actually raped. I think she is actually raped, the main character, Lilith. Uh, Lilith is, when she's born, she's seen as having this powerful aura. Uh, so she's kind of set apart from the rest of the slaves, and they treat her differently. And when she grows up, a group of older women kind of make her part of their plan for a revolt. The book has a magical feel to it, but not a fairies and happy and fluffy, but a very dark and mysterious and more of a potion brewing in a cave kind of feel to it. Uh, I absolutely loved it. What I remember most is 
that the way the slaves talk is written down phonetically. Um, so, for example, the book it, in the book, it's, uh, the slaves say Masa Jack, for example, instead of Master Jack. So it took me a while to, first of all, understand that. It also happens for other uh, terms. Uh, but that really adds to drawing you into the time and the place. So I really recommend this book. It's really good. Next, I want to talk about the book that I read for Columbia. Uh, and that is the classic A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I read it in Dutch, as you can see. It's a classic. It's magical realism. And it's a fatty. And it says 100 years of solitude. But I think in practice, it's set over a longer period of time. This book is about a family that lives in a remote village in Colombia and it this book kind of feels like a dream. There's stuff doesn't make sense but is kind of logical at the same time. Uh, things are very repetitive and some things just always, you know, seem to come back. There are flying there are random flying carpets at one point. Uh, some characters live for a couple of generations and others have a shorter life. One has 17 sons and all are given the same name uh, and the whole characters have the same name is well I was very happy to have a family tree at the beginning of the book the men especially are either called Aureliano or Jose Arcadio so you've got like five or six of each of them throughout the family tree which doesn't make it easier to understand especially when they live at the same time and they all have similar paths in their lives um, which also is one of the things that makes the book so good. Uh, this is definitely one of those classics that is worth reading, even though it is completely ethereal. Second to last, I want to talk about uh, the book that I read for Suriname. It's by Slaven van Suriname about Anton de Pomme, which translates to We Slaves of Suriname. Um, this is a nonfiction, and it's a book that I read last year with two friends with whom I've formed a book club. Uh, this is gruesome. This is gruesome, but interesting. It talks about uh, what life of slave is like and the types of punishments that they would get. Honestly, that was not something that I really wanted to know, but I it's necessary to know. It also talks about how in the Netherlands they had the feeling that they were pumping a lot of money into Suriname, but they weren't getting anything back because the slaves were lazy. Uh, and that whole black men and women are lazy is still a stereotype that we have now so I have a theory that that comes from this time um, but it was good so it was good to see where that originated from to be aware of the stereotype a bit more especially when the fact that they weren't getting their money back so to say was actually due to mismanagement and the whole a Dutch man mismanaging another country basically is not a stereotype that stuck the book also talks about uh, the revolts that were started by the Maroons and some escaped slaves. And what I really liked is that it gave faces to the leader of these revolts. So we got some history of how they came to be the leaders and how they set up these protests. So that was really interesting. It is a bit dry, but necessary to read. Lastly, I want to tell you about the book that I read for Chile, which is Ten Women. By Marcela Serrano. Uh, as the title said, it's about ten women. The ten women don't know one another. They meet one another through their therapist who kind of invites them all and asks them to talk about their lives. And all of these women have a different backgrounds. Some are young, some are old, some are poor, some are rich, uh, etc. Uh, so for example, we have a teenager who struggles with her sexuality, but we also have an older woman that at one point also fled Chile and everything in between, uh, married women, single women, um, divorced, uh, struggling to get food on the table, etc, etc. So it was a great cast of characters to get to know the country and the book gave me especially insight as to the influence of a dictator on a country and of what it was like to live under the rule of Pinochet at the time, so that was very interesting. So it was a good book to get a feeling for Chile, so, though I will say that I can't remember when I read this, but I don't really remember any of the characters, to be honest, though it must have been two to three years ago that I read this book, but still. So those are all of the books that I've read until now uh, for this project when it comes to North America, Middle America, and 
South America. If you have any recommendations for the other countries, please let me know. Laura from Laura Reads Pages already gave me ideas for Canada, so I'm already excited about that, although I haven't decided which one to read yet. I'm kind of looking forward to learning more about all of the countries in the Caribbean, because, because in my mind right now, honestly, they're kind of one and the same, so I'm looking forward to knowing what makes them them instead of this one Caribbean blotch. Have you read any of these books? Please let me know. I'll talk to you in the comments. See you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yes, I recorded this time. <laughs>